The next section is about the growing influence of the Parsis in India. I am going to quote Mahatma Gandhi who said, In numbers Parsis are beneath contempt but in contribution beyond compare. From Dadabai Navroji, the first Asian to be elected to the House of Commons in the British Parliament, Madam Kama, who unfurled the first flag of India's freedom, Parsis entered politics to support the Indian freedom movement against colonial rule. On 22nd August 1907, Pikaiji Kama unfurled the first Indian national flag at the International Socialist Congress at Stuttgart, appealing for help against colonialism. She asked people to, quote, cooperate in freeing one-fifth of the human race, unquote. Sir Firosha Mehta's statue towers over central Bombay as co-founder of the Indian National Congress, supporter of the Indian Municipal Charter and local self-government. He was also co-founder of the first bank to be manned and owned by Indians, the Central Bank of India. The family of Sir Dinsha Pitit founded the Bombay Native Stockbroker Association, now grown into one of the largest stock markets of the world, the Bombay Stock Exchange. He created industrial and engineering colleges, hospitals across Western India, and with his wife, Lady Sakarbhai Pitit, the first hospital for animals. Best seen in the Tata family is a determination to follow the Zoroastrian motto, Humakta Hukta Hurvarashta, good thoughts, good words, good deeds, in industry and business for the benefit of all humanity. Jamshedji Tata, whom Nehru called, quote, India's one-man planning commission, made an enormous contribution to the growth of India. Jamshedpur in eastern India is named after Jamshedji Tata, who was born in a small priestly home in Navsari. This beautiful planned city gave rights to its industrial workers much before Europe and America even considered these issues. Today, the Tatars have a global empire. Jamshedji created the Empress Mills at Nagpur, India's first luxury hotel, now the Taj Hotel global chain, and planned the first scientific institution of India, the Indian Institute of Science at Bangalore. While his successors built on these foundations to pioneer science, industry, philanthropy. With J.R.D. Tata, they even created India's first airline and provided support to the Atomic Energy Commission. Ratan Tata now heads the group, continuing the legacy of Bharat Ratna, J.R.D. Tata. The Tata Memorial Hospital was created by the sale of Lady Mehrbai Tata's jewellery and now has Tata Cancer Hospital's networks spread across India. While educational institutions like the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, TIS, and the Tata Scholarships are testimony to the Tata legacy. The assets of the group are held by the Tata Trusts and are put back into social development initiatives and foundations. They follow the belief of J.R.D. Tata and I quote him, Wealth is held in trust for the people and used exclusively for their benefit. What came from the people has gone back to the people. Other Parsi groups in business and industry who also contribute to philanthropic causes are the Godridge group now in their third generation, while the role of the Serum Institute of India founded by Dr. Cyrus Punawala has been vital in the fight against COVID. This Serum Institute is the largest manufacturer of vaccines by number in the world. From construction by the Shapurji Palanji group to hotels of the Avari group and the Mare distillery of Pakistan, Parsis try to contribute at every level of society. Dr. Homi Bhabha, India's Renaissance man, was scientist, artist, musician. He created and headed TIFR, the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, and BARC, the Bhabha Atomic Research Center, the largest atomic and scientific institutions of India. His creation of TIFR included beautiful gardens, while the TIFR collection of Indian art is one of the finest in the country. His own paintings also adorn the place. Most importantly, he created a group of highly trained, all-rounded scientific personnel, perhaps his greatest legacy to India. Besides business, Parsis have served in the armed forces, rising to the very highest levels. Field Marshal Sam Maniksha was the first Indian Army officer to be promoted to the, to the rank of Field Marshal. 
Air Marshal Engineer and Air Marshal Fali Major headed the Indian Air Force, while Admiral Jal Karsidji was the head of the Indian Navy. The legal world has been enriched by great Parsis who studied constitutional law, from Nani Palkiwala, Soli Sorabji, and Fali S. Nariman, all those who follow in their footsteps stand for truth and humanity. In the arts, from portraits and stained glass following Western traditions, Parsis became pioneers in encouraging the Indian art and cultural revival. So Jamshedji Jiji Boy began encouraging Indian artists after serving on the selection committee for the Great Exhibition at Crystal Palace in 1851 in London. He founded the Sir J.J. School of Arts, I quote, to improve both the arts and manufacture, unquote, of native crafts and therefore also pioneered Indian cottage industries. The progressive artist group of Bombay was patronized by Parsis who studied Mughal and Rajput paintings, Chola bronzes and researched and repaired the Ajanta and Elora sites. Karl Khandalwala's collection of Indian art and his scholarly research has enriched museums across India, while the Sir Kavasti Jhangir Public Hall is now the National Gallery of Modern Art, Mumbai. Parsis were pioneers in the Indian press, particularly in Western India. The Mumbai Samachar newspaper was started on the 1st of July, 1822. It has just celebrated 200 years and is the oldest surviving newspaper in India. The first woman photojournalist of India was Homai Vyarewala, whose iconic photographs of the freedom movement and the Dalai Lama and the birth of a new nation have become a part of Indian history and iconography. The link between writing for the press, social causes and entertainment is best seen in Dadabai Navroji, who began the paper Rast Goftar in 1851, formed the Parsi Elphinstone Dramatic Society and was a founder of Parsi Theatre. The ability of being bilingual enabled Parsis to accommodate Shakespeare as well as create drama from Persian and Indian epics. Parsi theatre with the first play Rustam Zabuli and Sorab of 1853 dealt with an ancient Persian tragedy from the Shah Nami, but soon plays were based on stories from Indian epics and the Arabian Nights. While entertaining, these also brought to light social reform movements for the reformation of Indian society. Women were encouraged to attend theatre, which soon expanded into other Indian languages like Urdu and Marathi, before travelling east and west with famous Parsi theatre troops. Theatre became the precursor of Indian cinema, where Parsis such as Sorab Modi and Jamshedji Madan were pioneers, as were actresses and singers of Indian classical music. At the same time, a conscious encouragement of Western classical music along with Indian classical music, widened appreciation of all the arts and led to foundations of many modern Indian institutions. Zubin Mehta, a household name, is one of the greatest conductors of the Los Angeles and New York Philharmonic Orchestras, has never forgotten his Parsi roots. Freddie Mercury is world famous, but his Parsi roots in Zanzibar as Freddie Balsara are unknown to most of his fans. In the world of sports, from the first cricket team to tour England, being the all-Parsi team of 1886, famous cricketers have played for and led the Indian cricket team. From cricket 1886 to car racing today, with Jahan Daruwala becoming a Formula One racing driver in 2022, this tiny community still produces leaders.